Welcome to today's Take and Make activity video as a part of the Imagine Your Story Summer Reading Program. My name is Mary Ann Wright and I'm a 4-H area educator with Lincoln University Cooperative Extension. Today's Take and Make activity is a treat basket for Grand Mare. This activity coordinates with the book that we read yesterday, which was Petite Rouge. Petite Rouge is a fun Cajun version of a classic folk tale Little Red Riding Hood. If you missed yesterday's story time video or Monday's video explaining what a folk tale is, you can see both of those at the Pemiscot County 4-H Facebook page or the Carothersville Public Library Summer Reading Program 2020 Facebook page. If you are enrolled in our summer reading program, I hope that you have picked up your take and make kit at the Carothersville Public Library, but if you haven't done so, you still have time to go and pick that up so that you can make this week's activity. If you do not have a kit, I will also be posting our guide sheet on our Facebook page so you can refer to that whenever you need to. Now today's take and make is actually divided into two separate activities. We are going to be making a fun Cajun snack mix and then a container to put that mix in. We're going to start with our snack mix. The ingredients that you need for this will be some Cajun seasoning, some rice and corn cereal, some mini pretzels, corn nuts, and then we are going to be needing some butter. So I have three tablespoons of butter that I have melted in a microwave safe bowl. Now the other supplies that you will need are a mixing bowl, mixing spoon, measuring cups and measuring spoons, and a baking sheet. If we look at our take and make guide, we see that the first step is to preheat our oven to 300 degrees. So go ahead and turn your oven on to 300 degrees. While that's heating up, we're going to make our snack mix. Step two says in a large mixing bowl, we are going to mix our pretzels, rice and corn cereal, and our corn nuts together. So I have my mixing bowl here. I'm going to be using a cup of our mini pretzels. those. We will need a cup and a half each of our cereals. So I have my rice squares, a cup, and then a half a cup. And my corn cereal. and then a half a cup for that. And then we are going to be using a half a cup of corn nuts. And these corn nuts give us a different texture in our snack mix. Now, with this snack mix, we can add different items. If you have a favorite, if you really like to have peanuts in your snack mix or maybe pecans, you can add those. Maybe there's a different type of chip or cracker that you like in a snack mix. The main thing is we want to use neutral flavored items in our snack mix because we want those to absorb the flavor and the spices that we're adding. So you can add and change the recipe any way you want. So I'm going to mix all my ingredients here in my bowl. And then I'm going to take that melted butter that I have Again, three tablespoons of melted butter, and I'm gonna drizzle it over the top of my mixture here. Then I'm going to coat each piece of my cereal and my pretzels and my corn nuts here just by stirring lightly. We want all of our mixture to shine so we know that at each piece has some butter on it because that butter is what our spice mixture is going to stick to. So it looks like mine is pretty good here. So now I'm going to add my spice. 
Now I'm going to be using a tablespoon of Cajun or Creole seasoning. And if you're not sure if you like Cajun or Creole spice, I would encourage you to start with a little less than a teaspoon or a little less than a tablespoon. You can always add spice, but it's harder to dilute this flavor. You would have to add a lot more of the other ingredients. And so it's always good to start out a little light on your spice here. So I have a tablespoon that I'm adding and I'm just sprinkling that over the top of my snack mix here. Then I'm just going to mix it again. I'm just going to lightly mix it. You can kind of toss it around in your bowl, shake it a little bit, but we want that spice to get distributed evenly over all of our mix. So we don't have pieces that are really hot and then pieces that aren't so hot. Once you have it mixed here, then I'm just going to pour this onto a baking sheet. And I have covered my baking sheet here with aluminum foil. That is a good trick that you can use when you're baking for less cleanup. So I have my baking sheet. I'm just gonna pour the snack mix evenly on my baking sheet there. Then I'm gonna take my spoon and just even it out to make sure that we don't have a lot of snack mix that's on top of each other. <coughs> we want it to be an even layer when it goes into the oven because we want it to get an even bake. So now when your oven is preheated and it's at 300 degrees, you can put this in the oven and you're going to bake it at 300 degrees for 30 minutes. But halfway through, you are going to take it out and just use your spoon to kind of stir it around. So then you'll put it back in for the last 15 minutes. Now, while that's baking, we can create our container or our basket that's going to hold our snack mix. <clears throat> for this step, you are going to need a piece of brown cardstock, some scissors, a stapler, a paper napkin or a cloth napkin, <coughs> and a plastic storage, food storage bag. So if we look at our instructions, it has a guide on the back of how to make our basket with a little diagram here. So the first thing we would want to do is we want to cut a strip from the short end of our cardstock that's about an inch and a half wide. So just take your scissors and cut that. This is going to end up being our handle for our basket. So now we can just set this piece to the side. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to cut some notches out of the sides of our paper. So if you have a pencil or a pen, the easiest way is to line up a ruler from one corner to the other and kind of draw a light X across your paper. You'll see it crosses in the middle and that's the point where our cuts are going to be going to. So after you have your lines drawn, you're going to take your scissors from the corner aimed up towards that center point and you're going to cut in about three or four inches just like that. And then you're going to tilt and you're going to do the same thing on this corner and then on the other two. So you'll have a shape that sort of looks like this. You'll have each corner has a diagonal cut. Next, if we look at our diagram, we are going to take our end that's slightly shorter and that's going to be the top for now and we are going to make two additional cuts that kind of will take this triangle section off of our paper so i'll show you here what that will look like so we'll end up looking like this and you're going to do that to both sides of your cardstock 
Now it's time to fold our basket together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flap that we have notched out and it's going to be pointed towards the back. And these two pointed pieces are going to come together in front of that flap just like this. And that is going to make the side of our basket. But before I staple it, I'm going to take my handle here and I'm going to place it right behind my basket. That way when I staple, I can staple through all the layers. So I'm going to be going through the handle, the two sides, and then the piece that is notched out. And I'm just going to take my stapler and staple right there. So it's going to look like this. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side of your cardstock. And you'll see that it starts to take shape and it's going to look like a basket. So that's what we want because we know that Little Red Riding Hood has her basket when she goes to her grandmother's house. Now this side is going to be a little bit harder just because you have to get your hand in there to hold it, but you're going to do the same thing with the stapler. You go right there, going through all four layers. So now you have your basket. Now we want a napkin, so you can use a paper napkin or a cloth napkin, but we're going to be using this to line our basket. So it looks like a cute little, almost like a picnic basket. So we just line it in there. Now the only thing left to do is to wait for our snack mix to finish baking. And so I have a batch that I did a little earlier here. So if you, when it comes out of the oven, you want it to cool completely and then you can put it into a food safe container that can store it just like this. Or you can take that bag that we have and put about a cup of your mixture into your food storage bag. Then I'm going to seal it and try to get all that air out of it. And then this bag can easily slip into our basket here. And what you'll end up with is something that looks like this. And this is a fun little treat that you can take to your grandma or to anybody that maybe would enjoy a fun snack mix. And you can leave that for them. Or you can even serve it out of this if you're having friends over, if you're having a movie night. Maybe this is a container that you can serve from and it's themed for the Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed today's activity. It was a fun and easy recipe. If you enjoy spending time in the kitchen and like experimenting with food, I would encourage you to go to the Pemiscot County 4-H Facebook page. We are doing our virtual summer camp, and this week is all about food and nutrition, and so we have other fun and easy recipes posted there as well. Okay, next week we have a brand new theme, a different type of imagined story that we will be exploring. So I hope you join me back on Monday when we announce what it is. Bye, guys.